The video game franchise Assassin's Creed pits the Order of Assassins against the Knights Templar in different historical contexts. From the Crusades in Jerusalem to the Vikings in Scandinavia and England, to the Revolutionary War in what would become the United States. The shadowy orders vie for control over the course of history. Both want to exert their influence on society, and both use violence in order to create peace. In the video games, the Templars are the villains, an evil order that wants to subjugate the masses because social control is the only way to attain peace. The Assassins, on the other hand, believe that freedom is the ultimate way to create a peaceful society. But how much of this rivalry is actually true to history? The man behind the assassination attempts on Saladin was the Nazari chief Sinan ad Din Sinan. Under his leadership, the Order of Assassins had a kind of renaissance. Sinan was a shrewd leader, and he created a cult of personality. He became known as the Old Man in the Mountain, a puppet master in the arts of targeted assassination. Sinan would initiate his fidan through a Bacchanalian ceremony that included all kinds of illicit substances, women, and other indulgences to show them what awaited once their suicide missions were complete. Sinan had been fighting with Saladin's predecessor, Nur al-Din, for a while already. In 1173, Sinan proposed an alliance with the Christian king of Jerusalem, Amarlik, against the Sunni Muslims who had their sights set on retaking Jerusalem. But on their way back from negotiations near Tripoli, the Nazari contingent was attacked and slain by Templar knights under the orders of their Grand Master, Odo de Saint Armand. The king of Jerusalem wasn't pleased and demanded the knights be turned over to his men. Amon refused, though, telling the king that only the Pope had the right to tell them what to do. The event turned Sinan and the Nazari against the Christians. They were now fighting a dual front against other Muslims and Christians, and it seemed like even the Christians couldn't get along. Infighting and backroom dealings plagued both sides. Three years later, in 1176, Saladin was at the gates of the Nazari fortress, Masiya. After a long siege, Saladin and Sinan came to a truce. Despite the assassination attempts, Saladin saw the Nazari as a useful ally. The two would now work together against the Templars and the Christians as they sought to take back the Holy Land. One of their most famous victories came in Israel against Saladin in 1177, in the Battle of Montgisard. 500 Templars led a few thousand crusaders against Saladin's army of 26,000. There is no record of it, but given the alliance between Saladin and Sinan, there could well have been assassins fighting with Saladin's forces. But Saladin would have the last laugh. In 1187, he took Jerusalem, reportedly offering King Guy, yes, King Guy, a nice sherbet, while he was held captive. Saladin ended up ransoming back the king and a lot of other Christians after the victory. However, the Templars were considered too fanatical, and every Templar who was captured was executed. Saladin would fight off another Christian incursion a few years later in the Third Crusade which lasted from 1189 to 1192. All the while, Sinan and the Nazari were working behind the scenes, taking out various leaders, Christian and Muslim alike. In 1192, both Saladin and Sinan passed away after decades of rule, defeats, victories, and complex relationships for sure. Now, while some creative license is taken in the Assassin's Creed video games, a lot of the historical backdrop is quite accurate and the assassins themselves very much existed. The Nazari Ismailis, who by the 11th century had captured a string of fortresses in the Persian mountains and were influencing regional politics through targeted hits on influential leaders. When you're done with this video, go check out the other videos we have on the assassins. This specific type of Shia Islam was considered heretical to just about every other Muslim sect and it included a hierarchical organizational structure, with their leader, the Imam, being the direct descendant of Nazar a man the Nazar believed was the true successor of the Prophet Muhammad. Under the Imam were the great dyes and ordinary dyes, Dai translating literally to one who summons. Basically, they were missionaries. But in the order of the assassins, these three titles made up the elite class. Under them, you had the worker bees, the Rafiq, the Lasik, and the Fidai, which means devoted to death, the title for the assassins who did the dirty work. The Templar organizational structure is quite similar, and certain sources claim that the Templars were actually directly influenced by the Nazari. The Templars also had three classes of elites, the Grand Master, the Grand Prior, and the Prior, and three classes or worker bees, Knights Esquires and Lay Brethren. 
Both groups even had similar uniforms, a red symbol on white cloth. Like the assassins, the Templars were religious warriors, founded in 1119 by a Frenchman named Hugh of Payon. They swore devotion to the Pope, took monastic vows, and dedicated their lives to protecting Christian pilgrims in Jerusalem. At first, it may seem like the Templars and the Assassins are two totally opposite groups, but if we dive deeper, there are some pretty interesting similarities. One is that the Templars and the Nazari Assassins had a common enemy. Sure, the Order of Assassins went after Christians from time to time, one of their most famous hits was on Conrad of Montferrat, an Italian who was named King of Jerusalem just a few days before meeting the business end of an assassin's dagger while walking through the streets in 1192. But the assassins had a longer, darker history of fighting other Muslims, and in certain situations saw the Christian crusaders and said, hmm, maybe we can use them somehow in our fight against these other Muslims who've been against us all these years. One of these common enemies was a guy named Saladin. Saladin was a Sunni Muslim. He helped unite the Muslim world against the Crusaders, and in 1187, he took Jerusalem back from the Christians, ending the Second Crusade. And although history remembers Saladin for uniting the Muslims, there was one group of Muslims that were very much not a part of that union, at least at first, the Assassins. The Nazari, a Shia sect, tried multiple times to take out the Sunni Saladin. The first came in 1175 during Saladin's siege of Aleppo, during his conquest of the then Shia-dominated Syria. He had already conquered Egypt a few years earlier, ending the reign of the Fatimid Caliphate. There was deep religious animosity there, and several assassins snuck into the Aleppo camp one night, armed and dangerous, but they were killed before they could get to the Sultan. A year later, they tried again, this time dressing up as soldiers in Saladin's army as it was besieging another Syrian city. This time, the assassins got to him, but Saladin was wearing armor and managed to survive. After that, though, the great sultan's security ramped up substantially. He now knew who the assassins were and turned their way, laying siege to Masyaf, one of the assassins' most important fortresses. Over the next hundred years, there would be four more crusades, each resulting in more losses for the Christians, and by 1291, all Christian strongholds were lost. In a last-ditch effort a few decades earlier, Pope Innocent IV had tried several times to ally with a new force that had just entered Persia, the Mongols. The alliance never materialized. As the Mongols swept through Persia, they wiped out the Nazari Ismaili. By 1271, the last Nazari fort was destroyed, and the Order of Assassins was scattered to the wind. After the final crusade, the Templars had become enemies in their own land, they had amassed a ton of power, land, and wealth. They were becoming a thorn in the side of the Catholic Church. There were accusations that the Templars denied Christ as God and the crucifixion. In 1307, the King of France ordered all Templars to be arrested. Soon after, the Pope ordered the arrest of all Templars across all of Western Europe and all of their property seized. Hundreds were burned at the stake. Others fled, some finding refuge in the Order of Hospitallers. Rumors that the Knights Templar remained intact and influential swirled. Connections have been made to the Masons, but that's a whole other video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching Nutty History.